welcome back to the forge. Uh, welcome. This episode we're going to be uh, sheath making. Um, this was supposed to be a sheath for the warrior, um, which we filmed it and uh, we lost 90% of the footage. Uh, some sort of a corruption. Not sure what happened, but it's gone, uh, and there wasn't enough left to um, to really be able to make a video from. So we've moved on. Um, I had my own personal EDC, my Blackstone Gen 1, um, that was in need of a new handle. Not that there's anything wrong with it, I just didn't like the one that was on it. So uh, we've rehandled that and uh, this video will be making the new sheath to go with it. So stick with us and uh, let's get after it. This is going to be a fold over taco style sheath. So our first step, take a knife, lay it out here on a piece of card. And we trace around, trying not to move it. So then you want to take it from that position, roll it up onto its back, and then back down again. That'll give you enough space to make things work. you've got a basic outline of your blade so what we then want to do I like to give myself about 20 mil clearance from side to side get up to this area here where the finger guard of the knife is still keep your 20 mil now we're going to extend this sheath so it comes up and covers a good probably half of the handle so. and then we just go through connect your dots point here where our guard is that's where our whelp is going to stop but the sheath itself is going to continue until we get to about this ridge line here What I like to do from here is cut out our shape
don't get where your center point is between your two halves of the blade. Fold. Card stock. Ensures that you get a symmetrical sheet. There you have your basic pattern. Now, normally for this particular knife, I do a scout carry slash hip carry with a H strap. Not doing it on this one. This one is going to have a belt loop. So we need to make a pattern for that. Um, and it's gonna have a few differences that I'm still working out. So. Bear with us and I'll be back with some more info. Okay, so we've got our pieces. That's our main body of the sheath. I've marked down the back here where the belt loop will be attached. I'm doing an overlay on this sheath. So that's our pattern for our overlay. And we've got our belt loop pattern. We've still yet to do a welt pattern, but we won't do that just yet. First thing we do now is we get some leather and we mark this out. I will generally always mark out on the flesh side of my leather. Working out where I want to place it. Reason I mark it on the flesh side is any marks that I make, if I slip, if I get it wrong, I change my mind, whatever else, there's no marks that are going to be left permanently behind on the visible side of the leather that makes it unusable. I also always use red pen um, simply because many of the dyes have a red base. So red kind of blends in a little bit better and becomes not quite as noticeable. So back. So overlay and we'll be able to get a belt loop up the top there. Should be able to in this section here fit the welt.
All right, so let's cut these pieces out. flying over. We're not in a flight path, we're just very close to the raft base and uh, Boeing have a plant out there where they service planes. So we often cop the noise. Same piece. Lucky last. Okay, so we've got our main body of the sheet overlay, and then we have the bell body panel, which we'll put on the back here. So, first things first the overlay, this piece is too thick. So, we've got to do some skiving to you need out of it. It's a crude technique. It's a tool that's not really designed for it, but it does the job. It's just a wood chisel. Um, I have a, um, a skiving knife that is um, 
two thirds made, I've just not gotten around to getting it finished. I have to be honest, I don't often do skiving on large pieces like this. Okay, so we've got that piece thinned down now. It's down to around about two mil thick for the bulk of it. Maybe a little bit. Thick on that side still. Some furry edges. Okay, so that's going to go on there. So we need to go through and uh, mark out for a pattern and a stitching line. A stitching line around the top here will be quite small. Gotta remember we've got to allow our stitching line on the actual sheath which will be coming in down here. So we've got to keep away from that a little bit. But we can continue around that section. There is no welt in this bit. Okay. So now I'm going to do some stamping on this. So let me uh, first of all bevel the edges. It's a number three beveler. A little bit temperamental this bevel. I haven't decided yet whether I like it or not. I've only just recently got it. Okay. I'll leave that for there while I work out how I'm stamping and we'll be back. Okay, so we've got here a um, uh, Craft Japan, uh, we're an M865, just a texture stamp. So we're going to go over this piece, give it a little bit of character. This will be a lengthy process.
Let's see, long process. So we'll take it up again when I'm finished. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got our stitching punched in, we can sew it.
we'll just be doing a basic saddle stitch on this. Um, a little bit more complicated, it's not quite so easy to just put this into something like a stitching pony. Okay, so that's where we're currently at with the top and the bottom piece sewn up. Um, our next thing to do is uh, we're going to put some leather conditioner on this uh, the brown part here and uh, throw that in the oven, let it soak in. And um, then we will move on to attaching the belt loop. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut our welt piece off of um, our pattern. Now mark it out here onto a piece of leather and cut that out. Where's my pen gone? Now, when it comes to this end here, which is at the point, I like to leave it about four mil short of where the actual fold of center is. That allows room for the thickness of the leather in there so that when you fold it over, it sits right. Now 
you also have to make sure that when you um, cut your pieces out and you mark out on your, your template um, where you're cutting for your weld line, if there's any curves or recurves in your blade that you don't cut it scooping with that recurve, otherwise you'll never be able to draw the mark out. Lay that in here. Place our knife in to get an idea of how we sit. Okay, so here's where you can go. Okay, when you take a little notch out here so that the guard will clear. that in here this thing just lets us know where to put our glue do the same on the other side sandpapering on the, um, the smooth side of the leather it makes it easier for your glue to get a grip find these um, fold over sheaths are a heck of a lot easier to make than a full uh, a full sheath but um, sometimes they just don't give you the desirable look that you're going for for whatever the knife happens to be a minute or two to dry and uh, we'll stick it together okay come on Top here. I like to get a bit of glue back down in the edge here in the very tip. Just to make when you pull the um, the whole thing together, it helps it to pull up and stay close shut. Well, you've got to try and make sure you've got all your pieces lined up well. Because you only get one chance to stick it together. Once you've stuck it, it doesn't really want to come apart. OK, 
Okay, so now you can do a um, dry fit with your knife, make sure your knife fits, and in this case it fits in there beautifully. So that is now ready once that glue cures overnight will be ready to be fully sewn up we'll go through over these edges with the uh, the belt grinder clean them up make them all nice and straight and level um, then we'll uh, run out work and we'll run a stitch groove in there now if we, if we really want to and uh, get some stitch marking done and um, glue it up uh, sorry sew it up Okay. So there you have the finished sheathing the blackstone. So, that's just simply utilizing those uh, snaps onto your belt to draw your knife. Take it off quite easily. So thanks for watching. And um, we will uh, we will be back. I'm not sure what our next video is going to be, um, but um, don't forget the uh, Warthog Raffle uh, drawn this Saturday at 5:30. Tickets close at 3:30 p.m. Um, that's hotting up. We've got uh, quite a few entrants there. 
Remember there is a, uh, a special kicker to this raffle um, that I won't be revealing until Saturday's draw, uh, but it makes the, uh, the, the uh, well worth buying tickets. So um, get your entries in there in our web store, www.saxonknivesaustralia.com.au slash the dash store, uh, and you'll find them right there on the, uh, the first page in our web store. So uh, we'll see you next time.